A quick video about pericarditis or inflammation of the pericardium in the heart. Lots of different causes, non-infective and infective. We think about infective first, viral, things like Coxsackie virus, things like um, glandular fever, Epstein-Barr virus, things like HIV, for example, bacterial, things like staphylococcal infections, and then finally fungal as well in terms of infective. It's non-infective, you've got things like MIs. Classically, you think about Dresler syndrome. You've got rheumatological conditions, things like SLE or sarcoidosis, and also things like uremia, and also certain medications, things like hydralazine and phenytoin. There's lots of other drugs that can cause it. In terms of presentation, chest pain which is usually central, so it can get confused with MIs and ischemia. It can be dull, it can be sharp. There's a number of different ways that chest pain can present. But classically, worse on inspiration, worse on lying flat, but relieved by leaning forward. So if you just imagine a picture of someone leaning forward and getting relief, that pericarditis picture sticks in your mind as a vision. In terms of what you might find when you examine someone, you look for signs of a pericardial rub, you may look for signs of a pericardial effusion, and also signs of tamponade might be present as well. ECG, classic changes, saddle-shaped ST elevation, but you can get other changes as well. Blood count changes, raised ESR, raised CRP, um, use the knees affected, things like full blood count can show leukocytosis, lots of different changes that you can get. In terms of management, generally it's analgesia, things like NSAIDs are going to be used uh, first and foremost, but colchicine has a role as well in some situations. You treat the cause, of course, take away the medication that's causing it, treat the infection that's causing it, and that goes without saying, and then rest and supportive management as well. So pericarditis, inflammation of the pericardium. Hope this helps.